Do you want six pack abs that turns heads, increases your confidence, and maybe even gets you the girl of your dreams? Well, today you've been blessed by the YouTube algorithm because I'm skipping all the BS to give you exactly what you need to get shredded abs fast. Let's start by debunking the most common myth when it comes to building a six pack. Most people believe that you must have the right genetics in order to be able to build a six pack. That couldn't be further from the truth. It's utterly, entirely wrong. If by genetics, you mean that you must have a specific DNA in order to build a six pack, or you must have some sort of genetic mutation, like the people who already have a six pack, that is why you're entirely wrong. Everyone has the ability to build a six pack. In fact, everyone already has a six pack underneath all that flab. To what extent your abs are currently showing is highly dependent on you as an individual. How serious you are about getting a six pack, your current lifestyle, and mostly the amount of fat that's hanging about your stomach, your organs, and essentially the amount of visceral fat. So fat around your organs. Where genetics does play a role is your starting point, how long it takes you to build visible abs, and your finish point, your end point. Just like any other muscle group in your body. Your biceps, triceps, shoulders, legs, glutes for women, it's all the same. Therefore, you must be training your abs as if you were training any other muscle. So what does training look like? At the very minimum, exactly like any other muscle group, you must be training your abs a minimum of once per week. However, that isn't entirely going to build you the abs of your dreams. If you want the abs of your dreams, I highly recommend that you train your abs three times per week. And you probably just had a heart attack, but it's not three full workouts. Come on, don't be silly. Literally just incorporate 10 to 15 minutes of abdominal exercises at the end of your workout or during your active rest days. Active rest is the time you take away from the gym when you're not at the gym. You can do it at home for all I care. However, you must incorporate the same principles like any other muscle group when it comes to progressive overload. If you want to build your abs, if you want to have insanely shredded abs that look symmetrical, that look like mine, I'm going to go ahead and say it. No shame. So by progressive overload, I mean increasing intensity, volume, frequency, repetitions, weight. Yes, weight. Like I said, you need to think about this like any other muscle group. If, if you just stick to body weight exercises for any other muscle group, is it going to grow? No, you're going to plateau very quickly. The same thing happens when it comes to your abs. You need specific targeted exercises that includes those variables from before. In addition to that, increasing the exercise difficulty as you progress in your training age. So the more you train, the more experience you have with incorporating abs in your week to week, then those older exercises are gonna be too easy for you. There are ways to increase difficulty from exercise to exercise, some of which I already have on my channel. So you can just go ahead, click that, click the video, and have a look for yourself. And I also plan on creating a lot more ab workouts in the future. Going back to training, before attempting to lose weight in order to get the six pack, if you haven't already incorporated targeted ab exercises, most likely when you've lost the weight, your six pack is going to be miserable. You might just see it, but it's going to be miserable. That is literally entirely because you haven't developed the muscles yet. You haven't taken the time to build the muscles that were underneath the flabs. So yes, everyone has a six pack, but 
Have you taken the time to build it? That's the main question, just like any other muscle group. Let's give you two scenarios. In scenario one, your starting physique is overweight. In this instance, yes, I would initially lose a lot of the kilograms to get back into the healthier weight bracket, then flip the script and immediately start in a caloric surplus in order to develop my muscles and assuming that you are also incorporating the ab training that I spoke about from earlier in your weight training routine, then I would train for a minimum of one entire year before deciding to shred and flip the script again to unmask your gains. The other scenario in scenario two, let's assume here that you're starting skinny. In this instance, I would immediately start developing the habits and gradually enter a surplus, a caloric surplus. This is gonna give you the best chance to build the most amount of muscle, the fastest. Again, assuming that you're incorporating the ab exercises that I mentioned from earlier in your weight training plan, your routine. Then again, in this scenario, train for a minimum of one year before deciding to unmask your gains. In both scenarios, the more time you give yourself, the longer you are consistent for, over time, something called body recomposition will occur. So for me, for example, right now, let me show you a photo. If I was to tell you, this is the heaviest I am right now, would you believe me? Probably not. My abs are still showing. My serratus anterior is still showing. So your obliques, the top half of your obliques, which is the hardest to get. Most people wouldn't believe me, but it is because I've been weightlifting, remaining consistent for so long, over such a long time period, that regardless if I'm shredded or on peak bulk, my abs will show no matter what. Because of my body composition, my fat stores are low, my muscle maturity is high, therefore regardless of where I am on the spectrum of bulk or shred, I will have a six pack. The same thing will happen with you, doesn't matter which scenario you're starting on. Again, going back to the myth, this is exactly why. That myth is BS. Everyone has a six pack, everyone can develop the six pack. Again, it depends on your starting point, the time it takes to build your abs to get to your final physique. I hope that makes sense. Now, look, let's quickly brush over the obvious. When it comes to unmasking your gains, yes, you must be in that caloric deficit. So either burning more calories than you consume or eating less calories than you burn. Most people combine the two in order to promote weight loss and fat loss. You must be in a caloric deficit in order to unmask your abs, in order to unmask your gains if you want to look competition ready or beach ready for a more realistic approach. Therefore, if you don't have the patience for body recomposition over the years, and you just wanna see what your abs look like in like six months time, then I would reverse the script after having trained for one year consistently to unmask your gains. But like I said, you must be in a caloric deficit. The specifics of entering that caloric deficit, that's a discussion for another video. In fact, I have a video right here on whichever corner for you to watch if you would like to know the most effective method for unmasking your abs and revealing your six pack. So ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up today's video. If you learned something, please consider dropping me a like, subscribing to the channel, and look, today's video was straightforward. It's not rocket science. However, if you have further questions on your mind, feel free to drop them down in the comment section below and I'll respond to you. Other than that, like I said, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you beautiful people in the next video.